Greetings, dear listeners. Today, we will dive into the fascinating world of machine learning and try to understand such a complex topic as transformers. In the early days of artificial intelligence, researchers sought to understand the workings of the human brain, that amazing biological computer. By studying data from neurobiological experiments and trying to visualize the complex neural architecture, they realized that the brain consists of interconnected neurons that transmit signals to each other along a chain of connections. Inspired by this idea of parallel information processing, scientists set out to create such a system artificially. This is how the first neural networks appeared. Computer models that imitate the work of biological neurons. Programmers tried to bring their functioning as close as possible to real processes in the brain. Transmission of excitatory signals, activation threshold, learning by adjusting connection weights. However, these early attempts were rather primitive. Despite some successes in solving simple problems, neural networks lacked the power and flexibility for truly complex calculations. The fact is that scientists only tried to roughly copy the external architecture of the brain without understanding the subtleties of its work at a fundamental level. The breakthrough came in 2017 when a group of researchers from Google Brain presented a revolutionary Transformers architecture in the legendary paper Attention is All You Need. It was Transformers that breathed new life into artificial intelligence, allowing neural networks to achieve amazing results in a variety of areas, from natural language processing to computer vision. The secret of Transformers lies in their ability to effectively take into account the context and relationships between elements of the input data. This makes them similar to the human brain, which also does not perceive information in isolation, but analyzes it in a holistic context. To bring you as close as possible to understanding how Transformers work, I will use an analogy with the creative process of an artist. This is how master painters learn to look at the world, highlighting key details, analyzing shapes and color relationships. Imagine how the artist examines the landscape, fixing with his gaze individual elements, the horizon, trees, clouds. But he doesn't just mechanically copy them, but strives to capture the harmony, the interconnection of the parts of the whole. Transformers works in a very similar way, capturing the essence of human perception. Now let's figure out how exactly this principle is implemented in practice. Learning the art of painting and drawing is a journey that can last a lifetime. This is one of the most difficult skills that requires not only patience, but also a deep understanding of technique and creative vision. Professional training programs offer a structured approach that allows even beginners to achieve noticeable results within a few years. Experienced teachers teach their students not just to copy what is visible, but to analyze and disassemble objects into their components, highlighting key elements and forms. This analytical approach allows students to build an image in stages, starting with basic shapes and gradually adding detail and volume. Academic techniques often include exercises in drawing simple geometric shapes such as cylinders, spheres and tori to help students better understand volume and perspective. For example, when drawing a portrait, students are taught to see the head as a sphere, adding cylindrical shapes for the nose and jaw. This approach helps create more realistic and three-dimensional images. Another important aspect of training is developing the ability to see and convey the dynamics of a figure. Artists learn to quickly indicate pose and movement with a few confident lines, which is the basis for more detailed painting. For example, famous artist school popular in the middle of the last century, offers one of these approaches, which is considered one of the most successful. It combines an analytical approach with practical exercises, allowing students to develop their skills in a realistic and creative direction. 
Professional artists who have the ability to draw from memory are truly amazing in their skill. They can look at an object and then recreate it on canvas with amazing accuracy and detail, even without the actual presence of the model. This not only demonstrates their technical prowess, but also their deep understanding of form and structure. Among the famous artists who were famous for their ability to create realistic works from memory through professional skills is John Singer Sargent. Sargent, who lived from 1856 to 1925, was an outstanding American portrait artist and master of painting. In his work, he used the technique of quick sketches and sketches from life, carefully studying and remembering the main lines, shapes, and proportions of the model. His method was based not on a phenomenal photographic memory, but on a deep professional ability to observe, analyze, and isolate key visual elements. Sargent methodically scanned the poser, recording and structuring in his memory the details of appearance, posture and clothing. Then, without a model in front of him, he could recreate realistic, lively and detailed portraits on canvas based on remembered characteristics. Also worth mentioning are Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, who were known to use memory drawing in their work to improve their cognitive abilities and ability to communicate ideas. Studying the art of painting and drawing is an immersion in the process of understanding the world through forms and proportions. Professional training gives artists a deep understanding of these aspects, allowing them to recreate lifelike images even when the subject is no longer in front of their eyes. Knowledge of the proportions of the human face, such as the ideal distance between the eyes, equal to the width of one eye and the ability to see types of faces allows artists to convey not only the external features but also the inner world of the people depicted. Great masters such as Rembrandt and John Singer Sargent demonstrated how a deep understanding of form and structure can lead to the creation of magnificent works of art. They used knowledge of physiognomy, including the ability to determine mood from external facial cues, such as raised eyebrows or a rounded face, to make their work lively and expressive. These principles and teaching methods, based on structured analysis and understanding of basic shapes, opened the way from amateur to true professional in the art of drawing. They allow artists to create new realistic images with a minimum set of information, revealing the essence and emotions of the model. Artists have a unique skill, the ability to process information in unusual ways. They know how to analyze and reduce the amount of information needed to memorize a portrait, and then, using their knowledge, recreate a realistic and emotional portrait even without observing the model. This technique used by artists is similar to other areas such as bicycle riding, where a person learns to balance and pedal without requiring a full understanding of the mechanics of the bicycle. In our laboratory, we deal with visual technologies and consider the technology of neural networks and transformers, which underlie modern scientific and technological breakthroughs. Our approach to visualization is different from what you may find from other authors. Transformers are usually analyzed from the point of view of working with language, but they can also be used to process visual information, which is what we do and use in our developments. It allows us to evaluate the versatility of this neural network architecture and shows that transformers can be used not only in language tasks, but also in the field of visualization acoustics, scientific data processing, molecular structure, and other types of information. The art of painting and drawing opens up to us not only a world of colors and lines, but also a unique way of perceiving and analyzing the environment. Artists having the skill of reducing and structuring information are able to recreate portraits, capturing not only the appearance, but also the inner world of the model. Remembering the famous artist school methodology 
founded by great masters such as Albert Dorn and Norman Rockwell, we see how important it is to preserve and develop classical approaches to teaching art. This school, which became the cradle of many talented illustrators, offered a unique training program. Particularly significant was the approach based on analyzing an object from four different points of view, which allowed artists to identify the main features and create deeper and more complete images. Andrew Loomis, one of the school's teachers, created a famous textbook on drawing the human head, which remains an invaluable resource for artists to this day. In our era, when neural networks and transformers open new horizons in visual information processing, we can be inspired by these classical methods to create new technologies. In our laboratory, we strive to develop specialized neural networks capable of generating videos and still images, breathing new life into ideas that were once forgotten due to the development of photography. In this way, we not only preserve the heritage of the past, but also apply it to the innovations of the future. As I already mentioned in our conversation, the methodology proposed by the artists from Famous Artist School is somewhat different from modern approaches to analyzing and structuring information. This method is based on four key points of view that allow the artist to gain a deeper understanding of the subject without touching the paper. He starts by analyzing the three-dimensional shapes present in the image and continues to identify the main features, which are then transformed into a full-fledged artistic image. So let's look at the four analysis methods that Famous Artist School offers, picture area. This technique emphasizes the compositional space of an image, helping the artist determine how elements will be placed on the canvas. Depth. Here we are talking about creating the illusion of depth on a plane, which allows you to give the image volume and realism. Line. This approach focuses on the use of lines to express movement and dynamics and to structure a composition. Value, a method that teaches you to see and convey light and shadow relationships, which is the key to creating a three-dimensional effect. Each of these approaches plays an important role in the process of remembering and reproducing images, allowing the artist to compress information into basic elements that can then be recreated using memory and imagination. These methods not only teach technical skills, but also develop the artist's ability to see and understand the world around him on a deeper level. The ability to draw from memory is key to mastering the proposed techniques. For example, consider a method based on the use of lines. Once you master this method, you will find that you can visualize any scene by representing it through lines of varying thicknesses. These lines, the number of which may be limited for ease of memorization, help to understand the arrangement of scene elements in accordance with the movement and dynamics of the characters. By applying these lines correctly, you will be able to accurately and naturally recreate the image. By remembering just the basic directions, you will be able to reproduce scenes realistically, drawing solely from memory. The methodology proposed by Famous Artist School pays special attention to the analysis of depth and tones. Depth is used to create the illusion of three-dimensional space, which allows the artist to give the image volume and realism. This is achieved by studying perspective and spatial relationships between objects. Luminance ratios play a key role in conveying the texture and dimension of an image. The artist learns to see and convey different levels of light and shadow, which makes the work more vibrant and expressive. A particularly useful technique can be when the artist squints to make the image less clear and better see the overall volume and distribution of brightness. These two methods together allow the artist not only to accurately reproduce observed objects, but also to convey their inner essence and emotional state. So let's delve into the essence of the method that underlies learning and creativity. The right approach to learning new skills, be it art or any other discipline, begins with analyzing information through the prism of your own experience. This allows you to structure your knowledge in a way that 
highlights key points, simplifies complex concepts, and makes them easier to understand. Like an artist who begins by analyzing the shape and color of an object, we strive to reduce the data to its essence. The resulting structural skeleton of information containing only the most important can be used to recreate the object with new details and perhaps even with greater accuracy than the original. Once you have a general outline and most importantly, a general conceptual idea of where the main thing is and where the minor thing is, you start adding details. You begin to work out the individual elements of the portrait while maintaining the overall outlines you defined in the first step. This process of encoding and decoding information is fundamental not only in learning, but also in the work of modern transformers an advanced type of neural networks which today are the basis of scientific and technological progress in the field of artificial intelligence. If we consider the architecture of the transformer, it becomes obvious that the two main blocks, the encoder and the decoder, are interconnected precisely in order to effectively transform and interpret information similar to how we analyze and recreate images in art. The stage of recreating a portrait from memory is similar to the work of a decoder in a transformer. More precisely, the principle of operation of the decoder is similar to this stage. It takes the overall picture created by the encoder and begins to add details, preserving the key elements highlighted by the encoder. At the final stage of creating a portrait, the artist adds the finishing touches, refines the details, adds shadows and highlights, making the portrait as expressive as possible. This is similar to the final stage of the transformer, where it uses attention layers and other aspects of the neural network to transform the input data into the final output. So we have found out the general principle of operation of the transformer, how its main components, the encoder and decoder work, and what is their meaning. But most importantly, if you understood the idea I outlined, which underlies the learning process and the subsequent effective use of knowledge accumulated in this way in practice, you understood the essence of the attention mechanism, an extremely important element both in the work of the human brain and the artificial neural network. It is based on the ability to isolate the main thing and discard the secondary without losing sight of the overall picture of what is happening. We have figured out the mechanism of attention and the principles of encoding and decoding information that underlie human learning and the work of the most advanced neural networks. Now we can dive into the practical aspects of transformer neural network architecture. We will have to understand how the creators of transformers manage to implement the principles of learning and using knowledge in program code described in their famous article, Attention is all you need. To process data, the machine must present it in a special form. If an illustrator can squint in order to see objects in generalized spots and thereby learn the techniques of great artists, then a neural network requires a completely different approach to implementing the attention mechanism. The inventors of transformers architecture have found an interesting technique that begins with the process of tokenization, breaking an image or text into structured elements. Then, in the self-attention layer stage, all elements resulting from tokenization are analyzed to identify structural relationships between them. Transformer training is the process of teaching a neural network to correctly establish connections between pairs of elements. This approach allows you to cover the image as a whole, starting the analysis from any element, for example, from the eye in a portrait. The transformer establishes connections between this element and all other parts of the image, determining how they relate to other details, such as the chin, ears, head rotation, color relationships, and so on. Thus, the transformer analyzes information in parallel. 
establishing global connections between elements in pairs, which makes its work extremely efficient. This is the essence of the attention mechanism. The tokenization process plays a key role in the analysis and processing of information. The correct breakdown of the source material into elements determines the success of subsequent analysis, regardless of whether it is carried out by the human brain or a neural network. In the context of the school of famous artists, if you seek to analyze an image through lines, it is important to isolate the main line types and patterns, converting them into tokens for further processing in the transformer's self-attention block. Similarly, when analyzing 3D shapes, tokenization must be done with enough data so that the neural network can recognize basic geometric shapes such as cylinders, spheres, and cubes and establish relationships between them. Thus, the field of tokenization develops, which, although it may not be as obvious in artistic work, is an important preliminary preparation of data for efficient processing by the transformer. It is important to emphasize that the attention mechanism used in transformers is not only focused on establishing the strength of connections between individual elements. While this is part of its function, the main purpose is to highlight the most significant elements of the source material. With the help of pairs and a pre-trained neural network that determines the correct connections between these pairs, it is possible to identify key elements that are fundamental to understanding the material. The mathematical vector apparatus operating within the layers of self-attention ultimately shows the significance of these elements. This significance provides enough information to extract key points, which are then used in the decoding block to create a new work based on these key elements. Thus, the attention mechanism contributes to a deep understanding of the source material and its creative rethinking. If you grasp the essence of what I just explained, then it will not be difficult for you to understand the next important element of the transformer neural network, which operates in the decoder block and is called attention to the encoder. This term may seem archaic and confusing for beginners in the study of neural networks, but given the associations that I am trying to show you, it seems harmonious and logical. Why does the decoder need encoder attention? because the essence of the process is to use compressed, concise information expressed in lines, geometric shapes, and basic patterns of object representation, and not in the original appearance of the data present in the source material. It is important for the decoder to consider the results of the encoder and begin to use them, applying the same attention mechanism but to the analysis carried out by the encoder. This, in my opinion, is easy to understand if we draw a parallel with the work of the artist, who at a certain moment asks the model to leave the scene and, without peeking, tries to recreate the portrait from memory using the information collected. This drawing from memory analogy should help illuminate this complex programming term well for those beginning to explore Transformers architecture. So the creators of the Transformers architecture took inspiration from the processes occurring in the human brain during learning and use of knowledge. They were able to adapt these processes for machine processing, which was their significant contribution. They also realized and integrated an important principle that I have already mentioned. For effective learning and the use of knowledge, it is necessary to study an object from different points of view, as proposed in the old but great school of artists. The artist must view the object not only from one position, but from at least four different ones in order for his illustration to be professional. Other approaches could be added, such as analyzing fractal elements or composition, or even creating fruit portraits, leading to specialized fruit tokenization and adding a fifth method of analysis. So the developers of the transformer incorporated this idea into their model, 
calling it multiple headed attention. This term describes the ability of a neural network to analyze information from different points of view, which is recommended in any professional activity, be it drawing or riding a bicycle. The many headed attention in Transformers can be unlimited, but it usually consists of eight heads. Now you understand that multi-headed attention is an attempt to force a neural network to perform the same task, but from different points of view, which is similar to the recommendations of the School of Great Artists. This analogy helps to better understand one of the key terms in transformer architecture. I hope that today's presentation has shed some light and given you the opportunity to understand the principles of operation of one of the greatest technological inventions, which is the engine of technical progress, the transformer neural network architecture. This neural network is so effective and in demand that in the next few years we will most likely see the rapid development of this particular type of AI models based on an attention mechanism inspired by the peculiarities of human attention. I'm sure you get the point now. I tried to make associations for you with key terms used in training professional artists and illustrators. I believe it has become clear to you why a transformer necessarily includes an encoder and a decoder in its structure, and what are their functions in this process, be it creating a portrait of a person in a figurative and emotional way using a neural network, or adding new lexemes to a sentence, or the formation of a competent translation from English into French. And even if you equip the robot with a neural network based on the architecture of transformers and start teaching it to ride a bicycle, he will also be able to effectively apply the described technique. I hope you can now confidently answer the questions of what the self-attention layer is and how self-attention differs from attention to the encoder. What is the essence of tokenization and why is it so important for the transformer to first identify the strength of connections in pairs between elements of the input sequence? However, of course, transformers are special elements that differ from the human brain and require many improvements, which make them still far from ideal, but very promising for further improvement. As you understand, we can even improve the tokenization stage Using the principles outlined in the podcast many times over, learning to highlight key elements for the subsequent use of the attention mechanism. Transformers, like great artists, must be able to recognize lines and depth of space in images. To do this, they process significant amounts of information. These neural networks are able to process data in parallel, which is their advantage. However, Optimization of information processing remains a key aspect. Our goal is to make transformers more efficient. We strive to bring their performance closer to the human brain's ability to process smaller amounts of data, but with high accuracy. Let me sum it up. We looked at how transformers work through a fascinating analogy with the creative process of an artist. Starting with a general understanding, we gradually delved into the details, becoming familiar with the key components of the architecture, tokenization, encoder and decoder, attention mechanism, self-attention and other aspects. And if you noticed, the very structure of our podcast was built on the principles laid down in Transformers. We started with an introduction and general explanation then gradually added more detail to get more technical, decoding a complex topic into simpler, more accessible designs. This approach reflects the aspect of transformer algorithms, where information passes through the encoder and decoder layers, ultimately becoming more detailed, clear, and useful. I hope that thanks to the structured presentation and visual comparisons with the artist's work, you were able to qualitatively grasp the essence of the functioning of transformers. This innovative architecture has ushered in a new era in the development of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Thank you for your attention. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to hear more educational content, be sure to subscribe to our channel. 
like share with friends and leave your comments and questions. I will be happy to answer them in future issues. Until new exciting meetings. Imagine the soundscape that pauses renovation A melody that defies all limitation We're breaking barriers, we're pushing the line Exploring new frontiers